In Genesis 18, Abraham had visitors from the Lord bearing a message of hope and a message of destruction. When the three men arrived, Abraham recognized them as messengers of God. He bowed himself toward the ground and asked them to stay with him. He wanted to wash their feet, bring them food, and have them rest and talk with him and Sarah for a while. Abraham hastened and ran to make the best food possible for his guests, and he took butter and milk and the calf which he addressed and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. The first lesson we can learn from Abraham in these verses is the importance of recognizing servants of the Lord and giving them honor and service because of who they represent. Every general conference, the current servants of the Lord come into our home. Do we hasten to make everything ready to listen to their words, just as Abraham did? In the next chapter, we have a very different example. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah do not recognize who these holy men are, except for Lot. They do the opposite of honoring and welcoming them into their homes. The contrast of these two examples is stark. We may want to ask ourselves where we are on the continuum between these two extremes. Elder Paul V. Johnson challenged us, decide now to make general conference a priority in your life. Decide to listen carefully and follow the teachings that are given. Listen to or read the talks more than once, to better understand and follow the counsel. By doing these things, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. The powers of darkness will be dispersed from before you, and the heavens will shake for your good. It is too bad that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah did not heed this advice. The second lesson we can learn from Abraham and Sarah is to believe the words of the Lord even when they seem impossible. After eating, the messengers tell Abraham some happy but seemingly impossible news. Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. Sarah was behind the tent door and could not be seen, but she could hear what they were saying. Sarah and Abraham were old, and Sarah was well beyond the age for having children. When she heard this statement, she laughed within herself, saying, after I am old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? The Lord heard her laughter and her incredulity that this prophecy would happen. When the Lord called her on it, Sarah denied laughing because she was afraid. The Lord's reminder to Sarah's unbelief was, is anything too hard for the Lord? Then the Lord reaffirms that he will return and Sarah will have a son. Abraham and Sarah had gone through decades of heartache and trial waiting for a child. Many of us may have burdens that weigh us down, many decades-long burdens. Abraham and Sarah's story is a message of hope that miracles do happen, especially for those who are faithful. Elder Russell M. Nelson taught us, I feel impressed to counsel those engaged in personal challenges to do right. In particular, my heart reaches out to those who feel discouraged by the magnitude of their struggle. Many shoulder heavy burdens of righteous responsibility, which on occasion seem so difficult to bear. I have heard those challenges termed impossible. We are children of the noble birthright who must carry on in spite of foredetermined status to be broadly outnumbered and widely opposed Challenges lie ahead for the church and for each member divinely charged towards self-improvement and service. How is it possible to achieve the impossible? Learn and obey the teachings of God. From the Holy Scriptures, heaven-sent lift will be found for heaven-sent duties. We can understand how Sarah might have felt being called out by the Lord for her laughing and her unbelief after decades and decades of wanting a child. We too may be afraid when the Lord chides us for our unbelief. We have the task to spread the gospel throughout the world. Yet we might feel discouraged like Sarah with the years of trying to bring the gospel to others. But we can hold on to these words of President Hinckley. Jesus is our leader, our strength, and our king. This is an age of pessimism. 
ours is a mission of faith. I call upon you to reaffirm your faith to move this work forward across the world. You can make it stronger by the manner in which you live. We can have faith and believe rather than be fearful because of mistakes and doubts or because of the wicked world we live in. Abraham and Sarah teach us about hope, that all things are possible to the Lord. Abraham's visitors were about to leave. In the Joseph Smith translation, these men are described as angels, which were holy men and were sent forth after the order of God. They have priesthood power and are about to use their priesthood power in judgment. The Lord decides to tell Abraham the purpose of the holy men's visit to Sodom and Gomorrah. It is to destroy the wickedness of the city. Abraham asks the question of the Lord, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked, if there be fifty righteous within the city? The Lord answers, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham asks if there are 45, 40, 30, 20, and finally 10 righteous people found there. Will the Lord destroy the city? And the Lord said, I will not destroy it for 10's sake. As the righteous, we can be assured that we will be protected, even when there is wickedness all around us. The wicked are also protected by the righteous in their midst, giving them further opportunities to repent. Elder Marky Peterson said, Though evil abounds in the world and violence grows by the day, he will watch over us if we are true. He has pledged to protect the righteous, even if he must send down fire from heaven to do so. If we will stand by him, he will stand by us. What wonderful words of hope. May your joy in the Lord increase this week as you listen to the words of the prophets, believe in miracles, and have faith in the Lord's protection.